Okay. Okay, in this, uh, this, <laughs> in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about uh, flow charting. And flow charting, you need, if you're going to design any program, you need to learn how to flow chart. And a very basic flow chart is the one shown here. This is on the Wikipedia page about flow charting. Now, flow charting is the, is so old school. This is like, this is not what people use these days. Um, if you're a professional coder, you'll use something like this. You would use a program like this. It's called a UML editor. UML stands for, doesn't stand for uh, unified markup language. It stands for unified modeling language. Usually whenever somebody talks about something like XML or HTML, they're talking about a language. Uh, UML is a modeling language. It's not a markup language. XML is a is is extensive markup language or something like that. HTML is hypertext markup language, um, or SGML is which is where XML came from is a markup language for just general document uh, the way you make documents. And uh, but UML was something that came out as a result of. Um, there's this guy, Grady Booch, and I'm going to look him up, Grady Booch, and he came up with uh, some of this stuff on UML, how to do UML charts and stuff. So let me see if we can find his stuff with UML. Booch method, uh, software, rational software, OMT. Design patterns. Uh, well, a class diagram. This came out. Booch methods, technique of software engineers, and mo object modeling language. So, um, so Booch came up with. I don't know if Booch came up with UML, but he had a lot to do with that. So we go UML. And uh, unified modeling language, uh, user guides, man. So, and uh, I don't know. You just look up UML, you'll find tons and tons of documentation on it. But uh, let's go to just UML. Let's see what it is. And, uh, UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. And this is uh, what it looks like. It's, it's, and it comes in different forms. There's a class diagram. You got it here. Component diagram, structure diagram. There's deployment diagrams, object diagrams package diagrams pro you know class somewhere there there's class di oh class diagrams up there okay sequence diagrams and uh, let me see state diagrams so they got all example of these diagrams this one right here would be um, what kind of diagram is this uh, it looks like an organizational diagram. Yeah, and uh, class diagram is more is the one everybody kind of understands. It looks like this, and uh, uh, that's a component diagram. Uh, this is a class diagram, and class diagrams are used for object oriented programming mainly, and it, it shows you the relationship between all of your stuff. Use case diagram would be closer to a flow chart. But use case diagrams you use whenever you're trying to show um, a relationship between people who um, it's it's usually used very high level up. It's used uh, between uh, it's used in the organization to show how they might use a computer program that you're working on. And uh, then the sequence diagram shows you the relationship between some some. Uh, some computers it can be in this case it was a computer and a server uh it would it would uh be used to uh 
show an interaction between uh, computers or between objects. It can be any number of things. It can show you a protocol between two computers that might be going over TCP IP. So it uses TCP IP protocol. What it, it, what it does is it's mainly for programs that might even be working in parallel, the kind of times whenever they can process stuff on their own, but when they have to interact, what they, when they wait on another program to complete its execution to show the interaction that they might take on. Flowcharts are really designed um, from the perspective of a single processing computer, a computer that just one does one thing after another. And um, so, but uh, on higher level computer programs, and whenever you've got multi multiple programs running on multiple platforms, you have to use something like UML to determine the how things are interacting between all of the programs. And if you're doing web development, and you're working with other computer programs that are written by other people and you have to be interacting with their computer programs then you'll need something like UML whenever you pass off your project to somebody else but if you're doing fun stuff you might just use a basic flowchart but depends on what your idea of fun is so um, I'm just gonna go back to let me see what we got Okay, I was I was doing something else here, and so I did a flow chart, and here's a a flow charting program. Now you, if you're going to do any flow charting, you probably just best do it on uh, leave the page. You best just best do it on um, a piece of paper. You might even come up with your own method of flow charting, um, but in this program here you know a, an example of how you might do a flow chart well uh, I don't know how to show that but just to let you know you, you do some flow charting before you make a complex program um, but if you don't plan to make anything complex you just want to do something else fun then you can uh, just work with the basic interpreter and hack hack as you go just like I was doing the previous uh, the previous tutorial so I'm going to leave it there because uh, I think I got too complex in this one <laughs>